Next up, we have HID Global. They power the trusted identities of the world's people, places and things, making it possible for people to transact safely, work productively and travel freely. Their identity solutions connect things that are accurately identified, verified and tracked digitally. Billions of things are connected through HID technology. They work with governments, hospitals, educational and financial institutions and industrial organisations, including the most innovative companies on the planet. Today, they'll speak about the six ways HID Singo readers provide a smart and secure access control experience that is highly versatile and has innovative features to keep organisations secure. After the presentation, you can put your own questions to HID in the live Q&A. Hello, uh, and thank you for, for joining me on this HID Global Tech Talk, uh, specifically concentrating on the HID Signo reader family. What we're going to do, we're going to have a look at the HID Signo. I'm going to go through uh, six of the features that, that make the HID Signo reader truly unique in, in the world of access control. So, so the opening slide. So the opening slide shows us the, the four form factors that we have for the HID Signo. We've got the Signo 20, the Signo 20K, the Signo 40, and the Signo 40K. Now you can see we've got both keypad versions, both in Mullion and in switch plate variants now. So what I want to really do today is go through these, these six points. These six points are, are really what makes Signo stand out from other readers that are in the marketplace. We're going to look at the uh, what we call automatic surface detection and how that improves read performance in all environments. We're going to look at the visually impaired mode. We're going to look at the intelligent power mode, and that's a way of reducing the power consumption of the reader when it's in its idle. Uh, we're going to look at the velocity attack detection, and that's a way of ensuring that uh, if the reader is under brute force attack, it's able to uh, reject that. Uh, and we're going to look at the enhanced tap, which improves the speed for mobile access. I'm also going to look at something called iBeacon support, which again is, is tied in with improving the mobile access experience. So first, first video we're going to look at is the automatic surface detection. And, and what the automatic surface detection does, it allows us to combat an issue that's been in the industry for a long time. Uh, and this is the issue where is if you're mounting a reader uh, on a predominantly metal environment so inside a turnstile or inside a, a, an elevator a lift car for example then this will have an impact on the performance of the reader and by the way the best way to show this if i if i start this video here uh, on the left so this is a traditional uh, this is an rk40 uh, i class reader and as you can see when when the card is presented to the reader and it's on the metal plate it fails to read the card so you have to actually space the reader off the metal plate before you've managed to get a successful read. And when you put the reader back on the plate, then it fails to read again. And, that, and that's purely because the metal work is, is affecting the, the read range of the reader. So with the HID signal, we can enable something that we call automatic surface detection. What automatic surface detection does, it combats this by tuning the reader to ensure that it delivers the best possible performance. So if I press play now, and this is the equivalent signal reader. This is a signal 40, okay? And this is sat on exactly the same metal plate with exactly the same card. And as we can see, with it mounted on the metal plate, it reads the card straight away, pretty much the same as if the metal wasn't there at all. So, so it's a really big step forward with regards to combating those difficult environments, you know, whereas previously you'd had to find a way of working around that, you know, with spaces or things like that. So, so that's the first thing I wanted to, to go through. It's a key feature of Signo. Uh, and the next thing I wanted to discuss uh, and show you is, is what we call the uh, visually impaired mode. Now, what the visually impaired mode is, is it's specifically to assist people uh, with limited eyesight, you know, to allow them to find then the keypad easier to enter their PIN code. So what happens is, as you can see, we, we've got a read there sitting in its standard state with a red backlit. Uh, and then what happens is, if we actually show the reader being there. So this, this is a person trying to find the, the number five. So found number five, and now they press and hold number five down, and there's a raised indicate in, indent there, so you can find it. And when you put it into visually impaired mode, not only does it change the color of the backlight, which makes it a lot easier to see if you are visually impaired, but the first thing it does is it sends a reset command down to the access control panel. 
And what that reset command does, it means that if you've made an error entering your pin, trying to find or enable visually impaired mode, it clears that message down so you start from scratch. And then the other thing it does, it actually desensitizes the keypad as well. So it means that you then have to have a more definite press. So when you find the keys and you give it a definite press and it's acknowledged by a beep, so you know you've actually pressed it, uh, and it just makes the whole experience easier for somebody who's visually impaired. And then once the pin is entered and the person has gone through the door, the reader then reverts back to its standard mode of operation. So, so that's what we call the, uh, the visually impaired mode. Okay. So the next slide I'm going to cover now is, is the intelligent power mode. Uh, and what the intelligent power mode is, is a way of reducing the overall power consumption of the reader. So the reader will sit there most of its life probably in its idle state. I mean, you know, you haven't got somebody going through the doors all the time. So if somebody isn't going through the doors all the time, it makes sense to have this low power mode, this standby mode. And what this standby mode does, it means that after 30 seconds of inactivity, then the overall power consumption for the reader is reduced by uh, up to 43%. So what happens here now, we've, we've presented the card and now we've got this period of wait. So everybody's gone through the door in the morning. We've now got this period of 30 seconds when the wait while the reader goes into low power mode. So if we, if we sit and watch the reader for a few seconds, and you, if you've got any questions that you want to ask about this, this is the time to, to put something into the, into the question box so we can, we can look at the questions after this presentation is complete. So we see now, now that reader is showing that it's gone into low power mode, and that's because the, the idle LED is beating. So the idle LED is polling, and that shows the user that it's in, intelligent power mode or low power consumption and then when the card is presented to the reader it wakes up from the mode uh, and then it goes back into normal power mode and then there's no delay why everybody goes through the door and then after 30 seconds it goes back into intelligent power management mode again and you get indicated by the by the uh, beating of the idle led very very key thing in this day and age you know if you have a large site with a large number of readers saving that 43 percent consumption you know, that, that could be a significant power saving. And then the next thing we want to look at, number four on our list of things to look at today, is the velocity attack detection. Now, velocity attack detection is a way of the reader being able to override or, or disable itself in the event of it believing that it's becoming under a brute force attack. I want to say brute force attack, I mean somebody and this example shows here, somebody trying the same password over and over and over again to gain entry. And you can have the same sort of scenario when you're talking about access control. So if we go, I'll just demonstrate this easier. So I have a, I have a standard iClass card here and I show it to the reader. And there we go. It recognizes the keys. The keys in the iClass card are the same as in the reader. So it reads the card credential. Okay. And it lets you through the door if you're on the database. I now show a range of different cards. And all these cards have different keys in. So what I'm trying to do as an attacker is find a way of getting through, trying to find out what keys are in that reader by showing various different cards. Now, the reader is intelligent enough to now realize that it thinks, hang on, I've just been shown several different encrypted cards, one after the other, after the other, after the other. So therefore, I, I think I'm under attack. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disable this reader and I'm gonna forbid anybody from getting through that door. Uh, it, goes into, it goes into override mode and then, and then that is it. That reader is effectively blocked until that reader is reset. So, so it doesn't allow anybody, anybody to come through the door at that point. So that's what velocity attack detection is. Velocity attack detection is purely about ensuring that the reader is protected in the event of a brute force attack. Moving a bit on to, on to mobile access uh, and, and the enhancements that have been made with HID Signal to improve the, uh, the user, end user experience of when using their mobile phone for access control. So, so one, of the, uh, one of the key things that we did with Signo is we changed the way that, that the Signo readers communicate with the phone. So, and, and, we, and we call this enhanced tap or sometimes referred to as dual mode as well. And what this does, essentially is it speeds up the process. It makes, about, about it, it's about two and a half to three times as quick uh, to read a transaction. So if I, if, if I press, press the video here, for example, so there we go, present the card, uh, so the phone in this instance, the virtual card on the phone, and instantly the phone, phone engaged with the reader and you get the, uh, 
green LED to show that the credential has been read. So that's, it really is instant now. I mean, there's no virtually no delay at all. It's an instant engagement with the phone. Instantly that credential is read and then provided you're allowed through the door in an access control style, then you're allowed through the door. And I can actually show some, some uh, data on that. And it, this is from the access log. And this is the difference between the iClass SE reader which is just running the standard tap without the enhanced. Uh, and then we can look at the HID signal. And we can see here the top one, for example, enhanced tap 316 milliseconds was the entire engagement of re-speed. And that's from the phone communicating with the reader, the secure channel being opened and the data being transferred between the phone and the reader. Now, if we look at the iClass SE example, well, we're looking at it's 660. Uh, seven milliseconds up to up to 700 milliseconds so so you can see it's at least half uh, you know and it is as much as three times as quick depending on different models of phones make a slight variant of difference so but that has really improved the experience and it makes it even more like a traditional tap proximity access control plastic card type experience which is what the ultimate game gain or the idea is with, with mobile access to make it as seamless and as easy to use as you possibly can. And then the final thing that uh, that we've done that I, that I want to talk about uh, today is the implementation of, of the iBeacon. Now what the iBeacon protocol is, this allows for, to ensure more importantly, that the iPhone, and this is only about, about iPhones, uh, is always in ready and willing to start the engagement with the reader. So what happens with iPhones? Anybody that's got an iPhone will know that uh, if you leave an app running in the background on an iPhone and that app is dormant, so that app isn't used for a period of time, then what'll happen is, you know, the iPhone will, will try to save battery power. And the way that it tries to save battery power is it by putting dormant apps to sleep, that's what it does. And if this happens with the HID mobile access app, it means that when you actually come to try and get through the door to present the reader, send the phone to the reader, if the app has gone to sleep, then you'd have to manually start the app back up again before it would then communicate with the reader. So we've now managed to combat that by using iBeacon. So what iBeacon does, it polls all the time. So the signal reader is polling all the time, looking for uh, an iPhone. So it's looking for an iPhone with a HID mobile access app. And what it'll do, it'll ensure that the app is awake. So when you actually, even if you don't use it for four hours, because you're in in the morning and then you sat at your desk all morning and you're going out at lunch and the app has gone to sleep, as soon as it becomes within range of the signal reader, the iBeacon protocol will ensure that the app is awake so that when you then present your reader, uh, sorry, present your phone to the reader, the app is ready. The process starts and because we're then using enhanced tap as well, we know we've got that 300 milliseconds. You know, we've got that instant engagement and we never have to go have the scenario where we need to reopen the app again. So so th those are the uh, those are the points that I wanted to, to cover in this in this tech talk. And I'm hoping it's been beneficial. Uh, and please submit any questions uh, in the question box and uh, I'll be happy to uh, to help. Thank you for listening. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much um, to James Burton from HID Global for your tech talk this morning. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us for the Q&A here. Um, this is now your time to get posting all your questions that you have for James. Um, now, you can pop them into the Q&A tab on the right-hand side of your screen. For some reason, mine doesn't seem to be working. I hope you, you're not having um, any problems, but obviously message if you are. Um, and don't forget, if you see a a question pop up that you'd like the answer to and you think ah oh, I was going to ask that um that's brilliant upvote it and then we'll definitely get that asked um now James it's great to meet you a fellow covid survivor um and Indeed. thank you very much um for your talk this morning now I'd like to kick off while people are warming up if that's okay um if you could just maybe um give a quick overview of the products and its benefits just for some people that have maybe joined the Q&A and haven't watched the talk just yet yeah, sure. No, thank you for that. So, so HID Signo is our new uh, signature reader line from HID Global that we uh, we launched uh, well in March of last year. Now uh, we we weren't able to do the launch we were hoping because of the way the world turned out last year, but we're still uh, 
we still managed to do a lot of virtual marketing for the product. But the thing that makes HID Signo different to or enhanced than the previous readers that, that we've that we've done from the multi-class and the i-class and, and other readers prior to that is that it is a single platform that delivers all the feature set for previous readers in one single reader family so so this allows you to do mobile access this allows you to do uh, migration from previous credential technology to secure credential technology all in one single platform. So we've really made the process of specifying the reader more simplistic. We've included all the features into the reader so you don't have to worry about a certain model. And of course, with Signo, it comes along with all its uh, new, new advanced tools as well. A uh, thing that we call HID Reader Manager that allows you to, to change the functionality of the reader from one specification to another to allow for certain eventualities. So, so it really is quite a, quite a game changer when it comes to the world of access control readers. Fantastic. Well, what is the battery life like on the Singo readers? Well, the, the, the Singo readers themselves are actually, uh, you know, they're powered, they're powered locally from, from 12 volts DC. But what, what we have done with Signo is we've reduced the amount of power that they take. So it can have a, it has an intelligent power management mode built in, which will reduce the current consumption 43% lower than than the standard idle uh and i mean obviously in this in this uh, green credentials in this world we live in it's 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 a key it's a key feature of the reader so. and also a massive percentage as well that's crazy um, it is yeah. how would the automatic surface detection technology work when fitting um into a turnstile yeah so 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 fitting readers into turnstiles you know is something that, that we say all the time especially with, with entrances to buildings. And one of the challenges of fitting uh, readers into turnstiles is the metal work. So, so because the turnstiles are predominantly metal and metal and access control, historically, they really don't, don't go together too well because they affect the performance of the reader. And when I say affect the performance of the reader, I mean, they affect the read range. So, so it's, it appears to be slower. You have to get the card closer to the reader before it'll work. So with, with HID Signo uh, automatic surface detection, what this does, we, we've uh, got this tuning. So, so what it does, it adjusts the reader for the environment that it's located in. And you will see now that, that when the automatic surface detection is applied, even if you're in a predominantly metal environment, the read range of the reader is not affected anything like that it was historically. Uh, and this really does make you know, a more consistent uh, and reliable read performance, even in a, even in a turnstile or in an elevator, you know, in a lift car as well. So. Yeah, very, very good for that element. Brilliant. Thank you, James. Um, the questions are coming in thick and fast now. So um, can you reset the reader remotely after it responds to brute force, um, a brute force attack? Or do you have to do this manually? This depends on how you've got the brute force attack uh, set up. So one you, real hard brute force attack, you have to cycle a power on the reader. So you'd have to actually go to the reader and cycle a power to reset it. But if it's actually set up as, as a soft brute force attack, then you can you can reset that centrally through an OSDP command. So it, it, it supports both options, as you'll find with Signo being very sort of powerful and flexible. We, we can do a lot of things with it. So. Brilliant. Well, I hope that's answered that question. Um, if the reader, uh, if the reader being attacked was on the room, I'll start again. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, if the reader being attacked was on the room the server or the PC was in, how would you be able to reset it? If the reader, well, okay, so so if the reader was being attacked on the server room it was in, then there would be an opportunity to to get access to the reader by by some means. I mean, we all know that uh, you know if if a room is secured by access control, there will be some sort of override method behind that as well. So 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 there will be there will be a, a safety mechanism built in. Or I'd expect there to be anyway. So, but it's a, it's a very interesting scenario because it's a, it's a bit of a, a chicken and egg scenario, isn't it? It's that's the sort of thing we're talking about. But but yeah, I mean, you you have to allow for that eventuality. Do you think that mobile access is the future for access control? Then, I think that mobile access is going to be a big player in the future of access control. I mean, I I think we're not going to see the complete departure of, of traditional plastic card credential you know, anytime soon, but we will see a wider adoption of mobile access and, and, and that will, you know, and gradually taper away from, from what we've had historically for the last, say, 30 years or more. Uh, I mean, access control or mobile phone, it makes sense to use your mobile phone as a credential, 
we all we all carry the vast majority of us carry now a, a smartphone that does pretty much everything we want it to do we use it for paying for our coffee in the morning we use it for satellite navigation we use it for fo taking photographs so why not use it for access control as well and with hid with a solution being based on on CIOS and it being as secure as, as a CIOS physical credential, you may as well you use your mobile phone moving forward. So, and, and we've done a lot of work to uh, sort of make that more seamless uh, process with Signal as well. We're going to do everything through our mobile phones, aren't we, in the future? We're just going to we be will. large so. mobile phone. Um, <laughs> what is iBeacon and how does this work? Is this something that will be coming to Android at some point soon? No, I mean, iBeacon I is it's an Apple exclusive. So what happens with the way that iPhones work, uh, iPhones are all about saving battery power. So what happens is if you have an app running on your iPhone and you don't use that app for a, for a period of time, then the operating system, the iOS operating, operating system will close the app down. So it'll shut the app down to save battery power. That's the way that iPhones work. OK, and what iBeacon does is iBeacon is resident in the signal reader and it's constantly polling all the time looking for the presence of an iPhone. And when an iPhone becomes in range of that signal reader, if you haven't used your mobile access for say four hours and the iPhone has, has put the application to sleep, the iBeacon protocol will wake that up, app up from sleep. So when you go to present your phone to the reader, it automatically works and you don't need to restart the application. So, so it's, it's really all about making the process quicker and more seamless. Uh, yeah, and that's and that's what iBeacon does. It is it is it is only a uh, an Apple phenomenon. That one. Yeah, so sorry, Android. <laughs> You're gonna have yeah. to wait for them to be able to develop something along the and uh, for the Android yeah. um, phones. So, how easy is it to upgrade to Singo from previous readers? Right. So, so it, I mean, very would be the easy answer to the question. But I mean, Singo is designed to fit into the same footprint as the previous readers. Okay. So, so if you've got a uh, uh, say an R10 or an R40 uh, iClass reader mounted onto the wall, you can take that off, you can put the signal mounting bracket, you can put the signal. So, so from that perspective, actual fitting it and filling in, fitting in the same space, very straightforward. And then the what signal allows you to do is continue to support your existing credential technology right back to HID prox, but allow you to migrate to the very latest with uh, you know HID uh, CIOS. So, so yes, I mean, we're not trying to make it complicated. We want to make it as easy as possible to migrate your readers. You know, we want to get everybody from, from legacy technology onto secure technology. So we have made that process as, as, as simple and as seamless as possible. Great, thank you, James. Now, what response you talked about um, how flexible and, and simple um, and fantastic Singo is. So can you tell us about the response that you've had from the market so far? Maybe if you've had any surprising or unexpected reactions? Do you know what? It, it's been it's been phenomenally successful. I mean, the the uptake of the product, you know, is uh, as if anything is probably caught us by surprise. I mean, we, we expected it to be big. It's a new product from HID Global, but it's so phenomenally successful. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of a lot of projects that, uh, you know, we've switched people onto onto HID Signal that we're looking at other technologies. You know, it really has sort of you know, taken over, taken over the market. Uh, and we've, we've deployed it on, oh, we've, we've, we've deployed, I'm trying to remember it, but I mean, it's, it's tens of thousands of, of readers, you know, it, it, it's a phenomenal amount of readers that, that have already been deployed in the short time it's been on the market, uh, you know, and, and we have lots of stuff in the pipeline for, for 2021 and beyond, you know, all, all using the new reader platform. So yeah, it's been, it's been a remarkable success. What a fantastic uh, no. challenge to have. <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's a, it's a really great product. And I mean, we're all we're very delighted with uh, with how it's been accepted in the market and, and all the feedback that we've received from the market. You know, it's really, really nice. Nice to get that, you know, with a new product. Yeah, I bet. Um, so we've got another question come in now. So in the past, I found that using a phone is slower than using hmm. a physical card. How does HID Singo um, resolve this? Yeah, so so no, this, this this is actually quite a quite a common question, especially because if you're going from a, a an older uh, prox card technology where it's very very quick to read, and then you go to to mobile access, it can it can initially appear to be a bit slower. So what we've done with with Signo is we've looked at how we can make that reading process quicker. Uh, and with Signo, we have a thing called enhanced tap, or it's sometimes referred to as dual mode. 
And what dual mode does is it means that both the phone and the reader are working uh, together to deliver the fastest possible read time. And if we were to look at it actually physical world times, and if we look at say an iPhone, because uh, you know that's probably the most popular brand of phone in, in the world. So if you look at an iPhone with the previous reader family, uh, and we're talking around about a second, perhaps 1.1 seconds, which it's not a year, but in access control, it can seem quite slow. But with enhanced tab, that's, that's now down to sort of 0.3, 0.4 per second. So, so, you know, that can make a significant difference, especially if there's a queue of people trying to go through a turnstile in the morning. So, so yeah, that, that's, that's what the enhanced tap feature on, on, the, on Signo delivers. Brilliant. Well, James, thank you so, so much for your time and all that fantastic information. Thank you guys so much for your questions um, and for joining us for this Tech Talk today. We've got our next Tech Talk up very, very soon at 11.30 and that's with Lorenz Technology. Um, stay safe, James. Thank you very much and uh, we'll see you again soon. Will do. Thank you very much.